Green, Pult, and Apocalypse winner will move on to the round of eight. Spawning in the bottom left-hand position as the Red Terran, your former WCS America champion, it is CM Storms of Pult. And his opponent over in the top right-hand corner, the blue Terran, it is IVD Apocalypse. And, you know, things can uh, things can escalate really fast in TVT. I know there's a lot of different all-ins, Reaper all-ins that can happen in the early stages. I feel like TVT these days has kind of turned into PvP of what used to be in, in Wings of Liberty. Like, it, there's no build is 100% complete. No build is defend, defending against everything. Uh, there's always some sort of strategy that you can do to, to get ahead against your opponent if you've studied your opponent. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. I think the most common builds are some varieties of Banshee play. That's what we see mostly, but you don't have to do that. You can do builds that counter-click Banshees, and you can even branch out and use Missile Turrets to defend and try to use Dim Marines, although that's much less common. Yeah, the Command Center openings have kind of died out, right? Like, we used to see a lot of just barracks into Command Center, and then double barracks or double refinery directly after that. Mm -hmm. But I kind of feel like that's non-existent these days. Uh, yeah. Just because of the power of the Reaper. There's a lot of Reaper openings that you can do to just kill those type of build. And Banshees being so cost-efficient. What's, what's your preference overall, Mike? In TBT? Yeah. I think the builds that I prefer are the quick builds to defend Banshees. Oh, so just, just hard-countering Banshees. Yeah, I like to hard-counter them mm -hmm. and just have a CC behind it. And then I just lose it to go for like a tank push or something like that instead. But puts you in an incredibly good spot against Banshees. Well, I mean, by incredibly good, I mean you're slightly ahead. <laughs> but yes, I understand what you yeah. mean. Um, but I mean, in, in the pro gaming world, I mean, that's, that's what it really comes down to, right? Like once you maintain, or once you have an advantage, normally you maintain that throughout the game. Uh, especially if you're playing correct. Mm -hmm. You're going to maintain that through the game and just win it out altogether. And these quote unquote small advantages that we always talk about end up being very large advantages just because it, it kind of exacerbates advantages and disadvantages. And uh, that's something that we see time and time again over here, even in the WCS America uh, later stages. But as it stands right now, both players choosing to just go for these standard tech routes. Uh, both of them have gone for. Uh, Depot racks refinery opening, so no super fast tech from these players. Uh, Pult slightly ahead, but it's so minor, just two seconds. And it looks like it's going to be Banshee tech from both players. Yeah, I think that's what we'll see. I guess there's still a chance they could make a Raven and a Viking, but I don't think so, based on the timing of these tech labs. But a Reaper, a delayed Reaper, look at this. And what are your thoughts on delayed Reapers here? I mean, I kind of like this. Like, it's a later scout, your opponent isn't really expecting it. A lot of players wouldn't have a unit or two units back here to check for this. And you get in, and you're able to see exactly what the composition is, or what the tech choice is. Oh, well, maybe not for him. Yeah. <laughs> Pult. I mean, who does that? Pult still has the two Marines there to defend against Reapers in case they come in at the five-minute timing. Like, that's so rare. It is. Maybe he studied Apocalypse. Maybe, Maybe he just plays more comprehensively than me and you. But it was definitely a good play to have the two Marines there. That's right. Banshees are on the way out, both of them at pretty even times, as you can see. And we're just going to find out who has the better execution with them. Command Center is going to be dropped first for Apocalypse. And look at this, a reactor on the factory. I'm wondering what this is going to be. Um, hmm. I actually don't know. Maybe he'll use it to just to swap them and make some more marines. A lot of marines, yeah. Yeah. And the command center goes down for Pult, slightly behind Apocalypses. Uh, we do have a Raven, though, popping up for Apocalypse immediately, and the Banshees are going to high-fi pretty soon here, or at least they're going to see each other. And a uh, Raven for no, Pult as well. Not. So both players just playing the, the same exact style. And this is something that we kind of expect. We see this all the time, but... The Marine count for Pult much better 
I would say overall. Also, Port has an engineering bay, which uh, Pot doesn't. Not sure if he wants to start upgrades sooner or if he just wants it to get turned. Nice initial scan there, will deny a little bit. Uh, SEV is being denied over here at the command center, and the Raven's gonna pop out here, and now Pult won't be able to do much else, although the command center, because it's positioned over here, it's gonna be able to uh, uh, be out of position to the point where an SEV will always be picked off. Great micro coming out from Apocalypse, so killing a lot of these Marines, and now finally backs off. And again, we have the same type of play out for Pult, so this is what we can kind of expect. Both players playing so well, but Pult just a little bit better. You can see 400 resources killed over just the 300 killed for his opponent. Actually, it's the same. It's the same in SUVs because it's the one Reaper. So both of them playing well. Uh, from this, it's very standard play. Uh, additional Banshees, a lot of Marines and Siege Tanks. A third commander going down here for our blue player over here. Apocalypse is going to choose that. I like that. I think it's a good choice by Apocalypse. When they're both doing this mirror boat, it's not too difficult to defend the other players, marines and tanks, with your own. And then that additional command center will just give you a, an economical edge. I almost think, uh, I think almost always that you should be doing the third command center here. I mean, what actually kills you? Uh, you will have very equivalent siege tank counts. They can't get an extra, like, siege tank on you, really, if you're playing right. And from there, you should be able to defend against all all ins because you have the defender's advantage. You're going to be able to have your production a lot faster than your opponents. And from there, you can just always take the win. So I think that's the correct play. Pult, though, just choosing to get an all-around stronger army. Additional two barracks are going to be added. Stim is started. And no upgrades to the plus one or anything. But two Banshees going to pop in here. Uh, and... We're going to see a dead Banshee pulp. Not paying attention because he's doing more stuff, more harassment over on the other side. And this can net a lot of kills over here. In the meantime, the Banshee of Apocalypse is getting a lot of kills from these SCVs in the main base. But now getting in range of the turret. Oh, needs to be careful. And likewise, over on the other side, the right side, this turret's going to finish in range. So that pulp will start to lose his Banshee. And down it goes. A lot of trades going on here, and the Banshee of, uh, of Pult will be able to get out, it looks like, over at the natural base. Uh, and likewise for the main Banshee at Apocalypse side. Let's take a look at the units lost, and it looks like Pult again, taking the slightly larger advantage. 12 workers killed over 10, and a lot more Marines killed. I mean, things are looking good for Pult, and it's mirror matchups. Yeah, I mean, Apocalypse does have that third command center, though. Which means he'll have slightly more mules, and he can make three SCVs at a time as opposed to two and catch up in that. So, I think it's still pretty even. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Paul has the upgrade lead, and he's making medevacs earlier, though, which is going to help him a lot. Yes, the upgrade lead gives him the ability to step onto the map a lot earlier, and that helps out so much in TVT when position is probably the most important thing. Obviously getting your siege tanks into the right position on Yansu, this area is what you have to watch out for, and this area is what you have to watch out for. Both are very far from each other, and both start kind of right here, right, with with Pult massing up in this location and being able to go to either direction. You can see Apocalypse, he just wants to meet his opponent out in the middle of the field, but he needs to be careful because the first siege tank might go down here, but good micro will maintain his count. And he has an uh, air superiority too. Yes, he does. As uh, ooh, ooh. Uh, double hunter seeker missile will go down. He's going to be able to kill at oh least one gosh. of the siege tanks. Those are good hunter seeker missiles. Yes, they are. And now it's just Vikings and siege tanks versus. Uh, Marines and siege tanks with a couple of auto turrets, and this is that this is a wash. Did you see how his tank was shooting the tank of Pult? But then he was going to land the Vikings next to Pult's tank, so he switched the target firing on the tank and shot Pult's last Marines while his Vikings landed and killed that tank. Yeah, it's really clever. If he did it the other way around, he wouldn't have killed them both without losing any Vikings. So yeah. that was smart. And now I think Apocalypse, he's taking the supply lead. That was a good yes, fight for him. He has. I mean, everything's looking really good for Apocalypse. 
uh, Marine stepping out on the floor, but because of this kind of passivity, the stim will finish. He will be able to get his engineering bay upgrades kind of, not equalized, but get them kind of similar to his opponents. Uh, combat shields will be started pretty soon here. Let's take a look at the production and the infrastructure. Six barracks, uh, and it looks like one and one for factory and starport. And, and same thing, six barracks. Yeah. Okay, so both of them are on even production for the most part, with the engineering bay and armory being slightly behind for Polt. Uh, and all of a sudden, Apocalypse is looking really good. He does have a supply advantage, 111 to 99, and of course his third base has started a lot earlier. Income tab 59 to 60 to 53. And he's going in for a medevac drop now, and Polt's kind of out of position here. He does have a lot of units that just popped out, though. And doing good damage against the SCVs. Oh my goodness, he's taking out a lot of them, down to 49. And he will probably get out of here pretty soon. No, he's just going to let all this stuff die, but not without taking one last SCV. That and pulled him farther ahead, though, Yeah, 65 to 47. And if we look at the army supply, it's even much, much stronger. I mean, there's more invested into the army supply of Apocalypse than there is to... Uh, to Pult. So, wow, Apocalypse in, in a position where he can easily just snowball this out of control. I mean, mid-game stage is probably the most important, especially on Yantu, if you're able to take an aggressive stance, especially your opponent's tower. That just gives you access to the third base, and also you can swing over here because of the positioning. When you defend against someone that has your tower, you need to pull back all the way to your natural and your third base. Apocalypse is just playing so well this game. They're both doing builds that are just so similar, almost mirrored, but just some very small differences. But Apocalypse, after that one good fight and with that medevac drop, he's turned it into a 30 supply lead for himself. That's right. And I, I think it really comes down to the fact that he got that extra command center, right? Yeah, that definitely helped. Those extra mules give you a lot of extra oh, money. Yeah. And especially in that stage, like the mid-game stage of TVT, you need to prioritize those mules. You need that mineral income to get as many production structures. Because there's a heavy dump. There's a good, like, a minute and a half worth of, uh, worth of just income that's going to production. You know, going to just getting your barracks, getting your add-ons, getting your extra factory. But from here, Pult has the better position in range of some of these, maybe these tanks. Yeah, he's in range of one of the tanks. Two of the tanks? And this is already, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Pult knows what he's doing with his units. And a lot of times, he's taking the advantage just because he's claiming position a lot faster than his opponent. Apocalypse stepping out onto the map, trying to cut the supply, saying, hey, you will have no more reinforcements. And from that, I can just slowly sandwich the rest of this army. I think he's actually considering going for a big counterattack with his units. I would know he's just going to go back and sandwich them. Oh, and killing two medevacs, too. That helps out a lot. Stops the retreat path of Pulp, and sandwiching helps so much. I mean, you're able to be so cost efficient with this. And All now right. he pushes in, but oh, he pushes in for the wrong angle. And these sea chicks might do an incredible amount of damage, but the micro is good so far from Apocalypse. Now Stutter stepping, stepping in, killing the sea chicks, killing all the Marines so fast. Apocalypse taking a gigantic advantage. Yet again, he won the first fight, and I will say he won the first fight because trading like that. When he goes command centers really early, gives him the advantage. He has the economic advantage. Now, the second main fight, he wins it. He's looking very good. Now, finally stepping out onto the map. Will it be enough, though? Will he be able to contest this? I don't think Paul realizes how far ahead Apocalypse is right now. Because this push, I don't think he has enough units to make it work. I don't think so either, as there are two siege tanks that do end up dying from Apocalypse's side. Uh, nice but pickups, yeah. It, it's still... It's still a position where I don't think Polk can do much from it because, as you can see, 184 supplied at 154, but we've seen big comebacks from Polk before. Uh, yeah. Also, 2-2 against 1-1, I believe, or 2-1 now. And Apocalypse, he has a fourth command center as well now, and he's taking a fourth base. So he's just playing so comprehensively, and I don't think he's made any mistakes early in this game so I don't far. Think so. And now the big stim up. He's going for the engagement, pushing into a very narrow hallway. And that might not bode well, but it looks like he's just overpowering his opponent, not even sieging up his siege tanks. But the Marines on the flank will be enough. No, it will not. Apocalypse 
just gunning down the center and taking the engagement. It doesn't even matter because he has that army advantage. He's just reading into these fights so yeah, well. He a lot really of the time is. I see Terrans do this, and then all their marines just get obliterated by siege tanks. But he's just realizing when he can take the fights and when he shouldn't. And he uh, he's just inching his way up on the map too, which I love so much. I mean, it really it really shows you that he does know exactly what he's doing with his units. Uh, I I really felt like before like he was just being so aggressive and he was being aggressive for the sake of being aggressive But now he's he's a lot more honed a lot more tuned in. I guess it's just regular ladder stuff that he just You know, it's like whatever But in this position against a player like Pult, he's really really just Making the right decisions at all times. Yeah, if we didn't have player names in this game I think I would think that blue was Pult and that red is Apocalypse, yeah. but no It's Apocalypse and he's playing so well this game I can't believe it. And I love how aggressive he's being with his units too. Yeah. And just taking fights. Like this one here. Well, no. okay, he needs to back <laughs> off. <so. laughs> but I, I love how he tried to take him and then backed off as soon as I didn't have enough. Instead of just playing a passive game and sieging up tanks and sitting back. And I see that a lot in TBT and this is so much more exciting I think to watch. I think so. I mean the fourth base is already established as you were saying before. Uh, it's in like a, the tougher position to defend and realistically Pult should be pressing on that a little bit more because normally this is one of the expansions this one this one this one and this one are the four expansions I always say like oh in TBT you shouldn't really be able to claim but not so much over here uh, which which will work out really well for uh, for Apocalypse a little bit later on because eventually Pult should be denying that and when that happens um, you know, at least you've mined from there. You know, you, you kind of, you have more resources to work with than your opponents. Again, pushing in. And a lot of units being wasted over here for Pult. A drop over here in the main base, though, it might do a little bit of damage. Killing a single siege tank now, picking up and getting away. No, he doesn't get away. Pult finally taking his fourth base now. And just a very rough situation now flooding the the uh, map with a lot of command centers three command centers go down three extra command centers go down for apocalypse but we might he see the big engagement there's a big uh, siege tank advantage though for pult and this all of a sudden swings around in favor of the wcs america season two winner Oh my goodness, it really came down to the unit. Let's take a look. Two siege tanks to nine. And as soon as Polk gets into position yet again, he will have a very good fight. He'll be able to sweep in and just kill every single unit. Apocalypse needs to rethink about how he wants his next engagement to happen. Apocalypse does have the better production though. So as he holds on longer, he'll be able to recover a little bit. The big problem is in the siege tank count. And that's something that's hard to overcome your opponent. Yeah, I, that takes a lot of time. 45 seconds for each siege tank. I mean, even if you have an extra production over your opponent, it's 11 to 4. I that takes you several minutes. Maybe if he pulls his SDVs, though, he might have enough here. He has a pretty good count of units built up already. Well, he's not yet, and he's pushing in, just getting his siege tanks into position so he can kill the front siege tank, I think. Yeah, there it is. Uh, he will be in range for that, but there's just so much stuff Does here. Does the have a lot more SCVs? Oh, I'm, I'm, the Pocalypse is ahead in supply now, believe it or not, but he just has nowhere near as many units as Paul. And it's just getting overwhelming here. A lot of the units, I think, are in the production of Apocalypse. Uh, things swinging around, but a nice drop onto all the siege tanks going to clean that up. And now Apocalypse, he might have stabilized, I think. And if you look at the supply, He's ahead, and sure, a lot of it's in production, but as those units come out of production, they'll help him out. Yeah, that's true. Again, uh, oh! A pole oh losing a lot of siege tanks. tanks here! A perfect little... Every tank goes down with only one shot. And from the top left-hand side, he's able to sweep through and kill a lot of the Marines. And Wow, you know, and now that's just flipped around to completely again. Yeah. Now Apocalypse is ahead on almost 50 supply. Well, let's take a look at units lost tab. They're pretty equivalent. Um, but of course the the mining has been a lot better for Apocalypse so oh, far. Oh, and he's loading up all these medevacs for a huge doom drop. That's a little bit risky, but what's... Oh my gosh, there's like nothing covering this main. This oh, might be perfect. Oh, it's gonna go for this one Marine. Oh, goodness. And now he's, 
He's on top of all the, uh, but the center tower. Pole hasn't to it yet. Now he's running back, but can he get back into his main? Uh, yes, he can, I yeah, think. I think he'll be fine. And meanwhile, there's a, har a large contingency of units moving into the center towers over here. A lot of siege tanks in this composition. And the Marines and Marauders are going to directly engage against this planetary fortress. And it looks like it's going to be enough, but is it worth I don't know, that's a well, lot of SCVs repairing. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of SCVs and plus two building armor. And that planetary can kill four to five Marines per shot. Sweet Jesus. Never underestimated the splash damage of a planetary fortress. Or a plus two building armor. And it works so much better against Marines than it does against Zerglings, because the Zerglings will just surround it and be in a line of one, but the Marines clump up in like six and seven and get yeah. one-shotted. Yeah, and, and also the Zerglings kind of block the SCVs from repairing. That helps out a lot, too. Still, though, Apocalypse is maintaining his lead. Yes, I agree. Uh, I mean, he's in a position where he's even... Um, He's even able to take out the third base, which doesn't have an, a, a lot, but the bottom right-hand side base, that can get denied pretty easily. And now, he's getting an even better position just with his siege tanks being able to, to be all the way out there. Now stimming down, and Pult, he's taking a really bad engagement. Look at this surround by our blue Terran. Apocalypse gonna push forward and just back up now because he has so many siege tanks behind this. Pult can never chase. And he's inching forward a little bit more. I'm not sure. How is he approaching this? I don't know. Maybe he wants to siege up and then use his medevacs to drop some units down there. I'm not actually sure. Maybe he just wants to siege up and kill some depots. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to just drop down units and try to pressure this. But he sees now that there's not a lot of minerals left, actually. Just one mineral node left. So it's almost not worth it to be pressing here. Uh, I think once Apocalypse realizes this, he's going to say, well, let's just kill this planetary fortress, and that's it. That's, you know, that, that'll be how we do it. A uh, couple of siege tanks. Uh, one of the siege tanks goes down over here, but this is kind of a lost cause. I think Apocalypse realizes that he's going to throw this away and concentrate his efforts elsewhere, and that's going to be over here, as we were saying before. But this is a tough situation for Pult to be in. I mean, let's look at the units tab. He has nine siege tanks to nine siege tanks. Mm -hmm. uh, he has no clear marine advantage. He doesn't have a lot of economy. I think he just needs to give up this third base Neither location. Neither have much economy. Apocalypse's main natural and third base are completely mined out. So he's only on his fourth base, and he hasn't dropped any mules there. But still, he just has so much more stuff than Pult right now. Yeah, well, 120 to spy to 200, 200. I mean, it's very clear. Oh, my goodness. It's very clear that Apocalypse has the big advantage uh, in terms of army standing, but we've seen the same exact position happen in the Buell game on Derelict Watcher, where, you know, he was behind in, in, in a lot. He was behind in economy. He was playing a very scrappy game. He just takes one or a couple good fights, and boom, he's back into it. And I would love to see Apocalypse take another base with one of his command centers, though. He has extra command centers just for mewling. And I think he should flow into that base. And I Still though, Pult just has so little income right now. Look, if you look at Pult's production tab, it's just an upgrade. And now he's adding two tanks, but he can't afford to produce, you know, the 14 Marines, two medevacs, two tanks that he wants. Yeah, uh, just the regular production cycle. Mm -hmm. And even these siege tanks being a little bit bothersome, but now, finally, uh, getting out of this bottom oh, no. position. I like uh, this from... Whoa. Sorry to interrupt, but Apocalypse is SCV pulling. I think he's just sacking these for supply. Yeah. <laughs> he's using them for a push. That's so many SCVs that just went down. Like 30. But income tab still showing a lot more, <laughs> a lot more uh, SCVs than his opponent. Apocalypse trying to poke in there, but nothing's going to come of it. And in terms of army supplies, they're actually pretty similar, despite the uh, the supplies in the top right-hand corner. Yeah. It what, comes to the SCV count. What, okay, Pult's finally cleaning up these two lone tanks. I was wondering if he would do this. They've just been sitting there with no support for the past maybe two, three minutes. Yeah. And scanning and taking on SCVs at this base. And from here, Apocalypse just... Oh, god dang. So he needs to take another base. He is. He is right now. I actually really like this base now. Yeah, because uh, he's defending it? Yeah, because like he's, well, he's defending it and he's also putting on pressure. I wish you would look at this bottom right hand side base that has been being mined for a long time now. Uh, it's kind of funny. 
but Apocalypse still doesn't know about it, and now we just have this this standoff from both players. Uh, the left side of the map is going to have a couple of engagements. I don't think that much because most of the army is over here on the right side. And now, here we go. It's being scouted. And we're going to see these rocks being crushed pretty soon. Oh, no, just a drop. And the rocks. And the rocks. And the face. I think he'll just be able to take it out with some submarines. And all these mules are pretty fresh, too. And and here the engagement out. comes, though. Oh, my gosh. Units from the high ground as well. And he's able to flank a lot of these siege tanks. Will he back up? Yes, he will. He backs up into a lot of siege tanks of his own apocalypse. Playing this out super oh, well, but a drop on top. Oh, this is so smart from Pulp. He's going to be able to clear out a lot of these siege tanks. But uh, no, the three of them are very low in hit points. He's just going to stem some units forward and take them out accordingly. In the meantime, there is an attack over at the mid left hand position. But this attack was actually very successful. And all of a sudden, army tab showing 107 supplies to 60, a big advantage for Pult. The economic advantage goes to Apocalypse. But this is such a huge army. It's so yeah. many tanks, oh so my many goodness. marines. And, and this is this is what I'm talking about. Pult always finds the better fights. He always is able to play the better, scrappier game. And now taking out the force of Apocalypse, Pult is monstrously ahead. I don't know how he keeps doing this, but he does it. And there it is. GG.